This week, Jimmy and I are Old Bahama Bay, which is located on the west end of Grand Bahama, only about 50 miles from Florida. Lobsters and conks, so Kenny could cook them for us at Sandy Key. We pulled up to the first spot, and Kenny said, Jump in the water and check it out and see if there's any conch there. So I jumped in, and right away I saw conch all over the place. I was bringing them up two and three at a time and handing them to Kenny in the boat. I was literally done catching our conch for lunch in about three minutes. We had more than we needed. We just took what we needed, left the rest there, and moved on to catch some lobster. It's not bad. Woo! Awesome. The current's really moving real strong right now. We've already got about a dozen conch, which is more than we need. We've only been out here a couple minutes. I think it's time to go ahead and run out a little further, try to get some lobster, because we have what we need for lunch for conch. Maybe, maybe even a couple extra for dinner. All right, guys, we're here with Captain Kenneth of West End Water Sports, and we're about to do some lobstering. First, I want to show you guys what we need in order to go lobstering. Good pair of fins. I have my Cressy Gara Model R fins here. We need a mask and snorkel, for sure. And a good pair of gloves. And also, here in the Bahamas, you're allowed to shoot the lobster, so we're using a Hawaiian sling. So now let's go get them. We pulled up to some of these sandy ledges where there was this like white sand that came up to the grass flats and the lobsters kind of burrow out holes underneath the grass flats. So as soon as we got to the first spot, I put on my crusty gear and jumped in. the ledge to see if there was a lobster there and I spotted like these little antennas and there was a really nice lobster underneath the ledge. So I swam up with the lobster and I was like so excited I had the lobster shot right between the eyes and I uh, swam up to the boat and I handed it to Kenny. Good job! Ha -ha, right between the eyes. Good job. Nice one. Yeah. Awesome. All the spots that we went to we not only saw the lobsters, but we also saw barracudas, trigger fish, all kinds of fish around us. And then we saw some trigger fish as well, and I kind of had in the back of my mind, man, I bet those would be good for lunch, but I really didn't think that I'd be able to shoot and kill one of them with the Hawaiian slings. I, I really didn't think it had enough power unless I got right on the trigger fish. I actually was able to get pretty close to one of those trigger fish and I pulled back and shot and I actually hit it and stoned it. So it kind of worked out good. So now we had lobster, conch and trigger fish for lunch. Woo -hoo -hoo! Trigger fish for dinner! Woo, that's a good one too. So I swim down, I'm looking around ledges, I'm looking or I'm looking everywhere and I see this antenna sticking out of a hole, like a really tiny hole. And I'm like, there's a nice lobster in there, but I wasn't sure if I could get a good shot at it. So what I did was I, I stuck my hand in that hole and I was like, I'm not going to lose this lobster. I need to get this lobster. I stuck my hand in that hole, I grabbed it by the horns and I pull it out and I got the lobster and I was super excited swimming up with it. We were lobstering in anywhere from five feet of water up to about 25 feet of water. It was actually easier for me to grab the lobster with my bare hands than to use the Hawaiian sling because I'm just so used to catching them with my hands. So we would kind of, I would kind of tickle them out of their holes or their coral or whatever they were up in with uh, the Hawaiian sling and then just catch them with my hands. So during this uh, lobstering dive, we saw 
so many cool things, not just lobsters, we saw barracudas, uh, Jimmy shot trigger fish, multiple trigger fish, and uh, another cool thing was we saw a gigantic turtle. So we saw this gigantic turtle and the turtle was like almost as big as me, actually it was probably as big as me. Uh, the turtle wouldn't leave the area so I decided to just swim down and uh, swim with it. Jimmy spotted another trigger fish, he swam down and shot it. I saw another trigger fish and it was bigger than the first one that I shot, so I went ahead and swam down on it and took a shot. I hit that trigger fish and it just took off with the shaft in him and I had to chase him down a little bit, but eventually he fell and I went ahead and grabbed him and brought him up to the boat. After that, Jimmy just handed the trigger fish to Kenny. At this point, we had plenty of food for lunch. We had several lobsters, conch, and a couple trigger fish. So we decided to go ahead and make our way back to the island so that we could cook up some lunch. Yeah, that's right. Good I need, yeah. So after having enough lobster, conch, and fish for lunch, we headed over to Sandy Key. As you can see, we had a pretty good day out there. Um, we got some nice lobster for lunch here, along with some conch, and also got a couple other surprises. Weren't really after these guys, but I saw them swimming around out there, so we did pop them. We'll fillet these up in a little bit. Here's a big one here. So we're gonna try to fillet these fish up real quick and uh, get the fire going and clean them and, and have a good lunch out here on Sandy Key before this rain comes because we do have a storm coming. And uh, it was pretty fun out there, huh, Louisa? Oh my gosh, it was a blast today. Yeah. It was great, and if you want to do this, if you're here at Old Bahama Bay, if you want to do this, Captain Kenneth will take you offshore, inshore, will take you lobstering, and um, you can just bring your catch right here at Sandy Key and he'll prepare it for you. All right, there's a couple different ways that you can clean lobster here. I'll just take my Cressy knife and just cut around the shell there, the top of the shell, the head. You see how easy that flips off? And then you have your tail. I'm gonna show you something else. We're gonna have to do that tail in a minute. We're gonna have to take that little poop vein out. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Just gonna show you on a couple here. Again, we're just cutting around there. Once you have it cut, flips right off really, really easy. And then the most common way that people clean the lobsters, what Louise is about to show you right now, by twisting them. Yeah, all you have to do is just grab it like this. Make sure you wear your gloves because they're spiny. And just twist it. Pull it, okay? This part you don't need. Well, she's getting that next lobster. I'll show you what I'm gonna do here about getting this vein out. Cause you really don't wanna eat that. All that is is just poop and stuff you don't want. See, there's a little hole right here. Just go in and you can twist. You can pull it out or if it pushes out, you could actually just pull it out from the top just like that. It's an easy way to do it. And if there's anything left in there, it will come out on here. But a lot of times it pushes right out of the top. So that's a clean tail now. So after cleaning those lobsters, we went ahead and got ready to start cleaning some of the conch. If you don't have an, uh, a knife or a hammer or something to get in there, you're still gonna come down the same place. Just use another conch shell. Crack right in here. It's a little bit messy, but that's what it takes. You want that shell broken. So if you're on an island without anything, one way to get in there, rinse it off. You can see right in here, you're going to loosen in that piece of meat. So you have to get that cut open. And you can see these guys are still alive, so he's hiding way up in there. You gotta try to get a hold of that foot there, pry it out. And there he goes. There we go. And there's the conch. That's what you're gonna eat. You rinse it off. 
You don't want any of this black stuff. And uh, I'm gonna cut that Viagra right out of there. I ain't gonna <laughs> eat that thing. I don't want it. No, thank you. Let's get all that black stuff off. You don't want any of this stuff. Is that right? Yeah. That's the guts. The stuff you don't want to eat. And again, the pistol. I've eaten too many of those in my life to eat another one. I don't really want it. All right, the guy behind the camera saying, eat it, eat it. I really don't like these things. There's not much flavor to them. Look at it wiggling, it's still alive. I mean, this is, this is a conch wiener wiggling in my hand right now. I'm gonna rinse that off a little bit. Mm. I didn't want to eat this, I really didn't. It's really disgusting. It tastes kind of like salt water. And then you cut this off right here. They use that to crawl around on the ground. That's gone, that's really hard, it wouldn't taste any good anyways. And I'm gonna use this, a dollar knife, because this is a pretty sharp knife. I'm gonna use this knife that's not quite as sharp to get the rest of it off. If they're alive, just kinda hit them a little bit, loosen them up. So I'm cutting towards my hand, I want a little bit dollar knife. Just wanna be able to get this thing loosened up so I get my fingers underneath it. It's kinda like a grouper cheek. If you ever pulled grouper cheek out, you kinda slide out. You just gotta get this part done right. And around here. And all I'm doing, now I'll, I'll drop that knife so you can see I'm getting my fingers. Rinse it off, it's very slippery. Underneath this here, and it just peels right off. And there's your meat. All this black stuff, you just want that to come off. I was trying to get it all in one, one shot, but there's that. That's also stingray food. As you can see, we got a, a buddy right here in the water. He's uh, hanging out because he's getting a free meal. So I got ready to clean those trigger fish and realized that the only knife that Kenny had on board was a very dull knife. That is some, that's some thick stuff, and this knife just is not sharp at all. But you'll fillet it just like you will any other fish. You gotta kinda get in that skin and work your way down it to be able to fillet these fish. Keep them on the cooler there. It's not the easiest fish to clean by any means. And trigger fish have extremely tough skin, and it was a bear trying to get through those, through the skin of those trigger fish with his knife, and luckily I had my dive knife with me in my Cressy dive bag. The other knife I was using, the fillet knife, was actually completely dull, so I'm having to actually use my Cressy dive knife. It's not gonna get the meat off the skin, but at least I can loosen it from the fish here. This knife is just, it's razor sharp, which is what I need for a fish like this. I got through it pretty good on the other one, but just, it was tough using that other knife. And I'm just going over the bone here so I don't dull this knife too much. You know what, I usually leave the skin connected to help pull it off, but because I don't have a big workspace, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that there. I'm gonna come back to this guy in a minute. So I grabbed my Cressy dive knife and started working my way through that trigger fish and started cleaning it with the short straight edge blade that I had on that knife. I'm gonna start with the straight edge part here if you can see that. And I'm just gonna get it loosened from the, skin, from the skin to make it easy on me when I actually go back with that fillet knife that's, uh, that's not very sharp. Again, it's not the way I would normally fillet them, but I'm working with what I have right now so it makes it a little easier for me. Now that I got it a little loosened, I can push my way through with this knife that's not very sharp. And there's your fillet. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna switch to this one here. Cut the uh, bones out of the middle. It's hard to see them here, but there's a line of bones that run right down the middle there. And all I'm doing is taking those bones out. We don't want a bone to get us while we're eating. And then the stomach lining. That part's no good. No bueno. There it is. Rinse it in salt water on ice. Then we can start on the next one. So I finished cleaning that trigger fish and gave it to Kenny to cook up. How often do you do this? Every day I can. Every day you can. As long as the is good. Uh -huh. Got people at Old Bahama Bay, I'll bring them out, feed the stingrays, we'll make some kong salad, do some grill. 
So while this is on the grill, I'll have the count salad going. By the time this is done, the salad will be ready. Kenny had brought tomatoes, bell peppers, onions, and lime for a conch salad. Conch salad is one of my favorite things to eat while I'm here in the Bahamas. I've been eating it here for over 25 years. I absolutely love it and I stuff myself with as much of it as I can get every time I come here because nowhere else in the world do they make conch salad like they make it here in the Bahamas. So to make that conch salad, Kenny chopped up some onions, bell peppers, tomatoes, and of course the conch, and uh, put all that together in a Tupperware container and squeezed lime all over it. That's all that you have to do to make the conch salad. It's onions, tomatoes, bell peppers, and lime. That's it, and of course the conch. He made us all conch salad. After he was done with the conch salad, uh, I started serving everybody, and everybody tried and they loved it. Does it get much better than that? Nope. This is super right. yummy. And that one. Perfect. Mmm. 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 Lobster, sugar fish, and now conch. Mm. Oh my god. Wow. We're spoiled. <laughs> Very spoiled. Oh my god. This is this is the best meal of the week so far. Yep. <laughs> Good That's thing, how we man. We do it at West End Water Spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We spoil you. We bring you out, cook your catch. You know, you have a good time. That's the way we do it here in the Bahamas at Old Bahama Bay. We started pulling those lobsters off the grill, and boy, they looked good. And this is what we're pulling off the grill right there: fresh lobster. It's as fresh as you're gonna get. Man, this is wonderful. Lobsters were super tasty. He prepared with all the vegetables. He added some bananas in it too, which uh, added extra flavor to it. It was just so good. That's the best part right there. Oh man, look at that. Mm. Very nice. So good. Very nice. Oh my gosh, Kenneth, you're an amazing <laughs> cook. I tried. so good. And while you're waiting for Kenny to prepare your food, uh, you have stingrays all around the island. They're very friendly. They come right up to you. I actually got in the water and started playing with them a little. There are also sharks around and many sharks around the island. So there's tons of wildlife there that you can get to see. So what's pretty cool here in Sandy Key is that after cooking the lobster and the conch, you can actually feed the rest of it to the stingrays. They're right here, they're super friendly, and they'll come right up to you. Once we got on the island, we noticed that there were all kinds of stingrays around the island that you can feed and swim with if you wanted to. And uh, Kenny said that's one of the things that he does on a regular basis when he brings people out to the island, is he'll actually pick up some squid or even just the conch that he's cleaning while he's out there and uh, let the guests feed the stingray while they're there. And that's why there's so many stingray there, because Kenny feeds them almost daily. take your lobstering and spear fishing and then you get to go to this private island get your food cooked for you and play with stingrays so if you're here at Old Bahama Bay I highly recommend you doing this.